Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Dear friend, what a blessing, what a joy today to meet you again and to fellowship with you through this media and to share God's word again with you. This is uh, Pastor Faces and Soha of Overseas Church in Prague, the Czech Republic. I've been a missionary here now since 19, 1993. So join me today as we share God's wonderful word. And I believe you are in for a great blessing. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you and bless you for giving us this chance again to meet, to share your word together. Now, Lord, we bring ourselves under the mighty covering of the blood of Jesus Christ. We ask for your anointing to be upon us and your light to shine in our hearts. Speak to us, Lord, today and do wonders among us and through us to your glory. And we bring the works of the devil down under our feet. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. And I want to share with you today something that I think is very, very important. Uh, recently, you know, the Lord be began to put this into my heart. And uh, this is the issue of uh, when Philip said to the Lord Jesus Christ, show us the Father and everything will be all right. And that is in John chapter 6 in the New Testament. John chapter 14, uh, verse 6, please. And look at what the Lord Jesus said. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus said, I am the way to the Father's heart. I am the way to the Father. Many religions of the world have tried to create their own way to, to God. Christ isn't just said, I am the way to God. People are looking for the way to God. God. Christ didn't just come to show us the way to God. He said, I have come that you might have life, that you might have it what? more abundantly. And he says, I am the way to the Father. You see, people of the world are not looking for the way to the Father. They are looking for the way to God. Everybody can talk about God. Religions can talk about God, 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 God. But nobody talks about going to the Father. <laughs> Jesus said, I, ha I am the way to the Father's heart. This is why Christianity is totally a different thing. It is not a religion. It is a relationship of Father and His children. It is not an organization or doctrines or dogmas. No, no, no. It is the Father and His children. Wow. The father is a family. It is not a religion. Family is not a religion. Family is not an organization. Family is family. The father is the head of his family. And the Lord said, I am the way to the father. He did not come to bring us to religion or to Christianity or to doctrines and dogmas. No, he came to bring us to the heart of the Father. In the Garden of Eden, when sin came, we lost our way to the Father's heart. And now Christ has to come to pay the price for our redemption, take away our sins, and open the door so that through him we can go to the Father. He said, I am the door. By me, if you enter in, you shall be saved and shall go in and out and find blessings and pasture and joy. Hallelujah. I am the way to the Father. Hallelujah. And I'm here today, friends, to help you and I find our way or remind ourselves that Christ did not come to present himself to us. No, he came to present us to bring the Father and us together. Wow. Remember there. And then in, um, in um, verse 7 of John 14, uh, Jesus said uh, to them, If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. Wow. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you have known him and have seen him. Wow. Look at verse 8. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and he sufficed us. My God. <laughs> Philip said to the Lord, 
show us the father. If you, if you show us the father, we will not ask you any more questions. If you show us the father, the argument has ended. No more argument, no more quarrel, no more question, no more confusion. If we can see the father, then we have all our needs met. And what an amazing thing. This is the cry of humanity. From the time Adam and Eve fell, to the garden, fell in sin in the Garden of Eden. This is a quest for many. The cry of the human heart is to, I want to see my father. I want to know my father. And they say, Lord, if you will show us the father, we promise you we will be okay. <laughs> and that's the cry of your heart today. Show me the father and then all my trouble is over. All my worry, anxiety, fear, nervousness, helplessness is over. Just show me my father. Show me who is the root and the origin and the source of my life and existence. I want to see the father. I want to know the father. I want to experience my root and origin. The one whose seed I am. The one that I bear his image and likeness. My root, my origin, my source, the one that I have is DNA. Show me the Father and my troubles are over. In this end time, this last days, in this season of confusion and war and chaos, where many people are wondering, who am I? Where did I come from? Why am I here? Where am I going to? What is the, where did I, how did I, how did I begin? What is the meaning of life? Why do I even exist? Philip got it right. Show us a father. And it suffices. Then everything will be okay. There are many people today that never known, the, known their father, the natural father. And um, either the father died when they were young or they, they had a single mother or whatever, you know, you know. Or the father doesn't relate to them, have nothing to do with them. So all their life, they try all they can looking for that father figure. Because the father defines who you are. The f your father is your root, is your origin. Uh, your father is the, the one, you, you are the seed of your father. You're not, you're not the seed of your mother. You are the seed of your father. So without that father figure, there is a crisis of identity. It is, it is very hard for anything else to take the place of a father. And so we can say that all through the New Testament... The Lord was always speaking about the Father, the Father. The Father sent me. I came forth from the Father. I go back to the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The Father in me, he is doing the works. I didn't come on my own. The Father sent me. All through the Bible, all through the book of John and the New Testament, he was always boasting of the Father. In fact, in John chapter 10, verse 30, he said, My Father and I, we are one. The Jews say, oh, oh, that's blasphemy. If he says he, him and the Father is one, if he says he is the Son of God, that means he is equal with God. Because if you are the Son of God, that means you have his DNA. That means you are the substance of the internal being. Woo, hallelujah to Jesus. <laughs> and uh, brethren, when I talk about the Father, forgive me, I get so excited. Hebrews chapter 1, if you can. And we're going to begin this journey on the issue of the Father. And in Hebrews chapter 1, uh, from verse 1, it says, God, who at other times and in different manners, spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, talking about the fathers, the, the Jewish fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the prophet, and all that, had in these last days spoken unto us in his Son, whom he had appointed, Heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Wow. Look at that. Who is the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person? Look at that. Jesus Christ is a brightness of the glory of the Father and the, the substance of his being. So you and I want to know whose image do we carry? 
Whose substance do we carry? Whom do I reflect and represent? Uh, what is my root and origin? Hallelujah to Jesus. Jesus said, the Bible says, he is the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Show us the Father and he sufficed us. Until you know the Father, <laughs> till you know the Father, till you see the Father, you will have a billion questions. You can be a Christian. You can be a believer. You can be anything you are. And if you don't know the Father, and, and the world will, the, the Christianity we know today, is speak, some are speaking only about Jesus, 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 Jesus. Je and there's nothing wrong with that. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, they are one. But we must understand the gospel. Jesus Christ came to this earth to bring us to the Father. Yes, we should worship Jesus, adore him, love him, praise him, honor him. We should praise the Holy Ghost, worship him, adore him. I do all that. But Jesus in, John, in, in Matthew 6, when they were asking him, Lord, teach us to pray. He said, after this manner, pray. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, you know that. Our Father. When you really want to ask something, you have to ask the Father in Jesus' name. Jesus said, ask that you might receive, that your joy might be what? Complete. In, in uh, 1985, December 24th, 4 p.m. in the afternoon in our hometown in Nigeria. Uh, 4 p.m. in the afternoon, it was December 23rd, you know, and the Lord appeared to me. And when he appeared to me, he brought a sort of kind of a silver spoon and turned that over. It became like a big screen. He began to show me my future, what I'm, this is what I'm doing today, doing the ministry. And then uh, he showed me there, John 16, 23 to 24. And he, sa he said, in that day, you shall ask me nothing. John 16. Let me read that for you. John 16, 23 to 24. In that day you shall ask me nothing. For whatsoever shall ask the Father in my name, he shall give it unto you. Look at that. John 16, verse 23. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. That day won't be asking me. Very literally I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. In that day you shall ask me nothing. Which day? The day when I have died on the cross? Pay for your sins, buried, rise from the dead, and went to heaven. And sit down at the right hand of the majesty on high. In that day, you shall ask me nothing. That means, you don't ask me, you ask the Father. Whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he, the Father, will give it to you. He said that, in my name, ask that you might receive, that your joy might be complete. When I want to ask something, serious, if I want to get serious with praying or asking for something, I go to the Father in the name of Jesus. Jesus is there by the right hand of the Father. He is my advocate. He's my intercessor. He said, Father, that's my brother Festus. Please, you know, you know, you know, you know. Give him what he wants. <laughs> Show us the Father and he suffices us. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man goes to the Father but by me. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The Father is in me, and I am in the Father. <laughs> you see, when Jesus, our Savior, uh, there in Colossians chapter 1, I should I'll read that for you in a moment. Chapter 1 of Colossians, and in verse um, and in verse, uh, verse uh, 15 says, Who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. You see, Jesus Christ is the visible form of the invisible God. <laughs> you see, the Father is in him. The Father is invisible. The visible form of God is Jesus. He is the visible form of the Father. Verse 16 says, For by him we are all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. 
and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Verse 18, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Now look at verse 19. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Bodily. All fullness dwell in Jesus Christ bodily. In the bodily form. Jesus Christ is the only visible form of God. In him should all fullness dwell bodily. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. In him. All fullness dwell bodily. That, that's in chapter 2 there of Colossians. 2 verse 9, you can see. And um, verse, uh, verse 6, as you have received, for received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Verse 7, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been thought, abandoned him with what? Thanksgiving. Verse 9, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Say with me, bodily. <laughs> That's why Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I am the bodily existence of God. But in me is the Father. And so Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and it suffices. And we will never again trouble you. <laughs> show us the Father and all our misery and confusion and worry and fear and anxiety will be over. I have known of women, uh, children who didn't know their father. And, uh, and they will bug their mothers. They will torture their mother. They will scratch her. They will, no matter, you can't bribe them. <laughs> they they want the father. <laughs> Today, many people are worshiping Mary. They worship angels. They worship this. They worship that. They worship goat. What a shame. The, the Bible said the glory of children is their father. In fact, in Proverbs chapter 17, Proverbs 17, it says, the glory of children is their father. 17 and verse 6, children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their fathers. Your glory is your father. If you don't know your father, you don't know whose glory you are manifesting. There is a crisis of identity. There is a mistaken identity. You'll be looking for yourself in the wrong places. And the marvel is this. Many of us might not have earthly father. My father died years ago. I was much in love with my father. I mean, we were friends. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That 2010, in September, in fact, in April, the Lord told me, I've given your father five more months. In April. So as I told my wife, my father going to be gone in September. And exactly in September, they called me and said, Dad is gone. I said, I know already. I knew since April he's going to be gone in September. <laughs> Praise God. I, I mean, uh, we were friends. And so uh, I know my earthly father. But that's not what is important. Even if you don't know your earthly father. Even if you don't know who was your earthly father, your physical father, you have no problem. All you need is to be born again. The moment you are born again, your heavenly father, the father of your spirit, will become to you both your spiritual and physical father. He will give to you the comfort, the love, the appreciation, the acceptance, the intimacy, the sense of confirmation and assurance that you cannot get from anything else. Hallelujah. The glory of children is their father. Do you know your heavenly father do you know the father of your spirit they are in john's gospel john chapter one my friends i hope you are listening to me john chapter one verse 12 say but uh, as but, but as many as received him to them gave he the power or the right to become the sons of god even to them that believe on his name as many as received Jesus, to them gave he the right, the power, to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which we are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of the will of God. The moment you say, Jesus, I give you my heart, I give you my life, the Holy Ghost comes upon you like as he came upon Mary and create, recreate your spirit and give you that new life. The moment you receive Christ in your heart, 
you are born again. Jesus says, except a man be born again, he cannot see or enter into the kingdom of God. He can't even say it. Can't even, it will make no sense to him. But when you give your heart to Jesus, and I ask you to do it today and now, all you have to do is, Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me on the cross of Calvary. You shed your blood for my sins. You were buried on the third day. You rose from the dead. Today, I ask you, Lord Jesus Christ, come into my heart and save my soul. From today, I belong to God. From today, I am a child of the living God. You don't have to go to heaven to bring Christ down. You don't have to go down to the grave to bring him up again. The word is now so close to you, near right now, even in your mouth. But if you will believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and confess his mouth that he is Lord, you shall be saved. For with the heart you believe and with the mouth you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and you are saved. Believe in your heart that God raised Christ from the dead and confess it with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you are born again. And when you are born again then, Christ begins the ministry of unfolding, revealing the Father to you. Hallelujah. As many as received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God. And there in, um, in John again, John 17, John 17 in verse 6, Jesus said, O righteous Father, the world had not known thee, but I have known thee. And these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto you them your name, and will keep on declaring it until the love that you have for me might be in them and I in them. Jesus said here, righteous father, no one knows you. The, the world doesn't know you, but I know you. And these ones have known that you sent me. And I have declared unto them your name. And will declare it more and more until the love you have for me might be in them and I in them. Until you know this name of the Father, you will never really know the love of God. Jesus said, I'm going to keep on revealing your name to them. I'll keep on doing that until this kind of love that exists between you and I might be in them and I be also in them. What is that name that Christ came to reveal? You see, we have Yahweh Rapha, Yahweh Nisi, Yahweh Thikenu. El Shaddai, there are all the names that God revealed to him to them in the Old Testament. But in this New Testament, Jesus is saying, I will reveal your name to them. And by this, through this name, the love that you have for me will be in them. What is this new name? This new name of God in the New Testament is Father. Abba Father. In the Old Testament, nobody they don't call God Father. They call him Jehovah. El Shaddai, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Tikenu, Jehovah Jireh. Nobody dare call God Father in the Old Testament because in the Old Testament they were not born again. They were not born of God. It is now that in Christ we can be what? Born again by the Holy Ghost and power, by the Word of God. We are born again. We are now born again in, because Christ has come, taking away sin. And when we repent of our sins, give our life to Jesus Christ, we are born again by the power of the Holy Ghost and the Word of God. So he said, I will reveal your new name to them. And that new name is the name Abba Father. Say with me, Abba Father. Daddy. That's why they crucified Jesus. They say he called God his Father. That means him and God is equal. That means he has God's DNA. And Jesus said, when you and I begin to know more and more and more what it means that the Father, that God is our Father, the love of the Father will be in us and Christ will be in us. Father, Father, the present day church have dwelled so much on Jesus, 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 Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. And that's fantastic. But Jesus said, I am the way to the Father. Don't stop at the way. Get to the destination. The Father is the destination. <laughs> you know, he asked them, whom do men say that I am? Some say, you are this, you are that, you are that prophet, you are this prophet. He said, but whom do you say that I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he said, nobody have taught you this, Peter. 
didn't learn this from the University of Theology School, but my Father, which is in heaven. And upon this rock of the revelation that I'm the Christ, the Son of the living God, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. My brothers and my sisters, in these last days, this is the rock. The rock is this. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. In our time where everything is falling apart and shifting, we must stand upon this rock, knowing that we are the sons and daughters of the living God. This is the rock for this hour. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. You are Festus, the son, a son of the living God. This is the rock. Upon this rock we stand and resist every lies of darkness. Friends, brothers and sisters, I don't know what you are going through today, but I pray for you that in a fresh new way, you, you might allow the Lord Jesus Christ to reveal the Father to you. Like Philip said, show us the Father and our troubles are over. And I know what I'm talking about. When you come to the place where you know the Father, you fellowship the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you bring your cares and anxieties to the throne of grace before the Holy of Holies, before the Father. And you, and you know your root and origin. You know where you come from and where you are going to. Could you say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father but by me. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ by the new and living way. Through his blood, I come to you. I bow down now before your throne of grace to find mercy and grace to meet in times of need and you are right there in the father's presence and you will feel the energy and the strength and the wholeness and reassurance and confirmation of who you are and where you come from hallelujah i will be talking to you again very soon but as i've said please can you write to us today if you are being blessed through this ministry and can you today send a little support to the address on the screen and support us stay online. We don't make money any other way. The support we, we, we have is what keeps us on the air. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the glory of the Father shine more and more brighter in your life. And again, I'm going to continue one more series on this issue of show us the Father. And I believe you're going to watch it. You're going to be blessed. God bless you and see you very soon. In Jesus' name, amen.